Hi everyone. Today's lecture will be short. We'll be talking about hierarchical or hang line grids, which add a horizontal element to columnar grids. In a hierarchical or hang line grid, we create a horizontal space in our columnar grid for specific types of information, like tags or images. Ellen Lupton refers to this kind of grid as a hang line grid, as columns hang from the horizontal line. This grid is also referred to as a hierarchical grid in Beth Tondra's book, Layout Essentials. Ellen Lupton says, in addition to creating vertical zones with the columns of the grid, you can also divide the page horizontally. For example, an area across the top can be reserved for images and captions, and body text can hang from a common line. Graphic designers call this a hang line. In architecture, a horizontal reference point like this is known as a datum. You can see in this example that the horizontal space holds images and captions. So how do you construct a hierarchical grid? You can construct a hierarchical grid by adding a horizontal line and gutter over your columnar grid. Perhaps you can have the row take up the upper quarter or third of the column or page. It could also be something related to the golden section. Of course, I like to look at the inherent geometry of the page and how everything can be tied together. Here are some interesting examples. This hierarchical grid is based somewhat on the Van der Graaff canon. You can see the text block goes lower than the original. In this example, they create different column widths using the golden ratio, so one column is 1.62 times larger than the other. To create the hierarchical grid, they've added a horizontal line at the intersection of the spread and the page diagonal. They then divided the block into halves to create the hang line hierarchical grid. This would be a great narrow space to put a title or something. Here's an example from Penguin, which I find very interesting. In this example, they use it for a cover of a book, but there's no reason you couldn't use something like this inside of a book. Let's take a look and see how it's created. First, they divide the page in half. Next, they strike a diagonal across the page. This part I find super interesting, and perhaps you will too. They then draw a diagonal line from the corner to intersect with the page diagonal. However, if you examine more closely, the point of the intersection is where the line forms a right angle with a diagonal. I personally think this is really genius. From there, a horizontal line is drawn from that intersection. From the end of the right angle diagonal, we draw another diagonal to the top half of the page. This intersection forms a space for the author's name. A vertical line is drawn from the intersection formed in step four and creates a space for the penguin logo. Another diagonal is drawn from the upper left corner to the bottom of the first horizontal. This intersection form here creates a space for the book's title and the publisher's name. I really like this example because of its approach to divide the page using diagonals and right angles. So when do you use hierarchical grids? Hierarchical grids are best used when you have information that is structured and repeats in form. Event programs would be a good example of this where the date of the event, title, company, location, and prices are consistent for multiple events. Here's a nice example I found of an event program. In this example, the upper portion of the page has a show information such as the date, the title, company, location, and price. It is also centered on each page and the consistent look gives a nice rhythm and structure to the looser content below. This contrast between the structured top and the playful bottom makes an interesting, fun, and inviting design but still looks appropriate and professional. The hierarchical grid can be used specifically for the event pages, but for other pages, like section breaks, you can approach the grid in a different manner. The table of contents or section breaks can just use a columnar grid, for example. Another appropriate use for the hierarchical grid would be for catalogs or cookbooks where the information structure is often repeated over many pages. In this plant catalog, each section could be for different types of plants. And in this cookbook example, the hierarchical grid could go over recipe details such as active time, servings, or serve as a space for a small introduction. Hierarchical grids are a great way to create more structure in your layout design. It is good for content where there is a lot of information that is similar in structure, like catalogs, cookbooks, or event programs. The rhythm and structure created by these grids are also a nice way to invite the reader into the content. All right, that's it for today's lecture. I hope you found it helpful and let me know if you need anything elaborated on or clarified. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in class.